Hey friends, in this new episode, we're going to focus on integrating our Flutter application with our smart contract. Uh, So into our smart contract, we are going to head over to our deploy.js, which is in the scripts folder. Uh, This is where we're going to set up a few things. We set up the name of our contract so that when we run the deploy.js, it deploys for us the contract. We're currently going to deploy it in our local uh, node. Uh, I, I, I remember in the first uh, episode we talked about the Sepolia testnet which will still deploy but first we want to make sure everything is working and then once everything is working uh, pushing it to the testnet uh, the Sepolia testnet is easy uh, so we're just making sure that we have updated we're just updating the variables and making sure our address is printed out then in our hardhat.config.js we're just going to set the network that we're going to use which is hard at and specifying the chain id to avoid any confusions so what happens is sometimes you find that um, the smart contract may be looked for in a different node so we want to specify the specific chain id that we're working with to avoid those confusions or any error mentioning that our contract cannot be found so we're running npx hard hat node to be able to start a node then we are compiling our project i had compiled it earlier that's why it's saying there's nothing to compile then we're going to now deploy our contract to the local node which by using the npx had a run network local host and using and now we get our contract address that's the address that we're going to head over to our flutter application and add it in our config dot that it's the one we're going to be using within the project so first, we're just going to set up our contract configurations. There are a number of things that the hard hat um, that hard hat has provided us. When creating the node, it also provided us with the RPC URL that we're going to use together with the WebSocket URL. So other than the contract address, we are going to set those two as well. And also, when you run the npx hard hat node, it also provides uh, you with a number of uh, test accounts that you can use. To, together with the private keys uh, so that we're also going to pick one of those so that you can interact with a smart contract so we already have a dummy address uh, variable we're just changing it to one of the ones that had hat has provided us Great. And then we're going to set the dummy, the private key of that dummy address, which Hard Hat has provided as well. Great. So those are the main configurations that we are working with. Then we're going to add the ABI of the smart contract. The ABI is the it's a JSON based file that is used to what what this JSON file does is basically it contains the methods the names the parameters and arguments of the smart contract not not the code itself so this is this is it's the one that's going to help us interact with the smart contract knowing which parameters or arguments we're supposed to or functions we're supposed to call so we just added that api.json pasted the code from the smart contract you can find it in the artifacts folder contracts and it has the contract the name of the contract in ft marketplace.json then we just paste it in our front end then we're going to create uh we're creating a contract folder in our features folder and then we're going to create a file called nft provider this is where all our main contract operations will happen so we create our class we extend the change notifier because we're going to actually manage our states here um Next thing we're going to do is now import a few plugins that we need to be able to interact with the smart contract from Web3 client to HTTP 
to WebSocket and also the DO HTTP client. Great. Um, now what? With that done, uh, we're going to start by defining a Web3 client instance. Then we'll in initialize it in a function. We're going to create a function, a feature function called init. This is where we're going to initiate some of the configuration starting with the Web3. Give it the RPC URL that we set up on the config. Uh, set up the HTTP client as well and also the WebSocket. Return IO web socket channel dot connect the web socket URL and cast string from string. Great. So now we have our web three client instance uh, initialized. Next, we want to read the ABI ABI dot JSON. Um, so we had already set it up, so we're just going to read from it uh, by using the root bundle. So we load the string, specify the location of our abi.json, and then we're going to uh, we're going to decode it so that we can pick the contract name. We are going to pick the contract name, and also we're going to pick the contract itself which contains the parameters and all the parameters, the methods, the arguments in our smart contract. It doesn't hold the code itself. So the beauty of this, of the ABI, is that whenever you decide to call a specific function, it first checks in the ABI file if it exists. If it doesn't exist, it will you will get an error that the function, the specific function does not exist without going straight to the, going all the way to interacting with a smart contract that's deployed. So you get the error earlier on. And those are one of the benefits of ABI. Or if, you, for example, you call a function and you haven't added, maybe the function expects five arguments and you've just provided four, you'll get it right on before interacting with a smart contract itself. So it helps us provide the correct functions, methods, and arguments and parameters. So we've just defined the Ethereum address or the contract address that we're going to use. Uh, so To be able to use the address that we set in the config, we need to use the Ethereum address class and convert it. Convert the string in the config.file. So we're creating another method called deployed contract. Remember, so in the init folder, not only is it that, that code in the init executed, we're also passing in the get ABI function inside it and also we're going to pass the get deploy contract function so these three functions need to be running successfully and all the variables uh, set successfully before we interact with any of the functions so we've done the same specify the deploy contract by calling the deployed contract class in the web3 client and giving it the bi code and the contract address great so now Going back to our application, if you recall, we all we have the create NFT, we're able to view our profile. We want to also see the subscriptions or magazines that are available for us to buy from. So where we're going to start is in the beginning. 
the landing in the explore what we want to do when the user clicks on explore we want to onboard this user into the smart into the blockchain so what how where the, uh, the operation we're going to use is the add profile operation or add profile function in the smart contract so what it does it just picks the msg.sender and stores it in one of the state variables that we had set earlier on so for you to be able to interact with the function in the Web3 client, you'll need to define define that function in a contract function class. And you can always use the api.json to confirm the name because if you end up even providing the wrong uh, spelling, it will tell you that the, for this type of function does not exist. And you can still either confirm from api.json or the smart contract itself be able to see all the arguments or what is expected so we're just going to paste the name of our function and then once that's done we now work on a fun a future function for it for it so we're going to call it future void add profile because we're not returning anything set a sync and then call our init to make sure that the three our functions are executed properly and everything is set and ready to use then we're going to call our web3 client instance and use the send transaction method so in the blockchain there are two things that you can do you can either read or you can write remember uh, in the blockchain one of the features of blockchain is that it's immutable the only thing you can do is either read from it or write on it and once you write it cannot be deleted so in our case adding a profile we are writing into the block blockchain so what we need to use is a send transaction because it will require some gas to be used so that's why we you need to have um, some ether in your ethereum address for the transaction to go through so uh Whenever you're writing, you use a send transaction and you specify the creds. The creds is a private key that we had so that the signing can be done as well of the transaction. Then we pass our nonce just to make sure that our transaction is not duplicated or there's no any conflict. We specify our contract, which you already set uh, earlier on. Specify the function which is a contract function that we defined on top and this uh, specific function does not require parameters So we're going to leave that array or list empty Then we specify the chain ID just the same number as we had set in the deployed in the hardhat.config.js Great, so that's what it will do now. We want to uh, Get the balance of our dummy address so that you can set it at the top right where we have 0.00, .00. to do that we have the ether amount class in the web3 client where we just get call our web3 client instance and and get the balance using the get balance function and just pass our dummy address and it will give us the balance so we're just defining a variable here that we're going to set the balance to and we the balance comes in form of ether amount which of course that or flutter does not understand that so we need to convert it into an init integer or something that uh, is more readable for that so once we've done that we're going to also prepare a get for it so that we can use it in, within the application great so we just done that we have sent a transaction to add the profile we have gotten the balance great so we're just making a few changes on the ad profile please note in this episode you'll find despite working on the smart contract and finishing and the flat as well there are few changes that will always happen so we're just removing the return because we know what we don't need a return anymore um, and just making it short so we're just incrementing getting the current user id and setting it to the new user so when you refresh that first we need to set this add profile function to the landing screen uh, specifically the explore but because we have a change notifier we need to set it in the main function first for it to work so let's do that change notifier provider create
pass our NFT provider, then we set our child to const my app class. Great. So let's just refresh our application. Next, since we just created the function, we want to assign it to the explore button in our landing screen. So first we need to create an instance of the NFT provider so that we can use it. Create a watch. And then on the explore button, we just, before pushing it to the home page, let's just add this user and also have the balance ready. And also we're going to head over to our balance. Um, we had uh, had coded the balance itself, but now we want it to pick from the NFT provider. To do that, we need to go to the home page, but that's where it is. We just define the NFT provider, then we head over to our balance, remove the hard coded uh, text and just get our balance from there. So let's set a get, yeah, double get balance and return balance. And then use that and we set our string into four decimal places so that it's more accurate. So let's run. Um, as you can see, our balance is correct. Uh, but now we need to confirm if we have actually added our profile and for us to do that we have no errors if you want to know actually if you're getting errors not only do you check on the flutter side but also on the left terminal uh whenever there's an error it also pops us pops up an error so we don't have any but we need to check if we have actually added our profile so the next function or operation that we will work on is get profile And that's where we'll get to see whether we have added our profile correctly. So we define another contract function class called get profile. Define it in the get deploy contract function and specify the specific function it's supposed to call. And in our case, we th there's something we're going to do. So first thing, we have a state variable called profiles. It was private, now we're setting it to public so that you can get all the profiles. And then we want to get the count of all users. Then with all the profiles and the number of users, we're going to do a small for loop and get our specific um, profile um, object for that specific uh, Ethereum address. There are many ways to work on this. Uh, but in my case, uh, what I did is created a function. We're going to create a function called where we get the number of users and then the profile state variable that you have seen holds all the profiles. Then in my front end, I just do a for loop checking, checking uh, or looking for an object, a profile object that holds, that belongs to the dummy address that we have. So we're doing a profile list, but here is now where we're going to first get the count or the number of users. So let's define that in our smart contract. We'll do a simple function get number of users since our counter is private if it was actually public and then um, we could call it directly that would be great but now we just need to pick it first uh, first it's private but then we have to pick it it's an off type counter then convert it to a uint to 56 
Great. Then we need whenever you update or create a new function, you need to get the ABI.json ABI and replace it and paste it. Otherwise, if you use your old one, it will tell you there's no such function. Considering we have created it just right now. Um, so now let's specify a new contract function called profile count and specify it in our get deploy contract that will hold a function get number of users. You can just pick the specific function name. Wait. That's what we'll pass in our function in the web3 client.call so that you get the total number. And one thing you'll notice is whenever we get a response from the smart contract, it comes in form of a list. Everything is in a list. It's a, lists are inside lists and <laughs> lists are inside other lists. So we're expecting a list to come in and from that list we'll get the information that we need. So what we want to do is if index is equals to two, meaning zero, one, two, home, create NFT prof. So profile is in index two, call the NFT dot get my profile. So we have an error value not in range 32. Um, So we need to compile this project. Let's try and compile and upload to the local host, local network. Mm. And then update our contract address. So whenever you deploy again, it, it creates a new contract address for you. Uh, so let's see, um, we still have our error. And if you notice, our balance is actually changing. Whenever we use, uh, we push a transaction that involves gas. Wait. Um, So you find the reason why we were getting the previous error is because we created a new function and we didn't uh, deploy it. So the smart contract we're using does not have the function that we have actually created. So we had to deploy it again. Um, and that's... So we not, we not only update the BI and the, and the BI alone, considering that we have created, uh, changed a new function added a new function it's we are bound to deploy again and pass and this is why it's good to test everything in the local first because you can imagine deploying to the testnet over and over waiting for it to be visible which doesn't take long as well but it's a longer process than just doing it locally and then once everything is okay we'll push it to the testnet so we're doing the same thing we're doing a call method but now to the get profile uh, contract function so to get all our profiles we're doing a simple push as you can see we have our dummy address but the mistake we're doing we're getting we have three repeated um, records of our dummy address that means there's something wrong with our smart contract it's not checking if the smart contract already exists if the dummy address already exists so let's just do a small check and update on that false so 
when it falls that's when we pass mm -hmm. so we've just compiled our project just restarted the node um, and deployed we pick our new contract address head over to our application and just update that in the config dot that but yeah mm. So now we're getting one um, copy of our dummy address, which is good. So you'll find that the list of the count number of users shows two, and we just pushed one, uh, only one, um, executed only once. This is because uh, there's a type of address called a null address. I haven't found a way to get rid of it or why it appears in some of the operations that I make. But once that is, I have a small uh, hack to actually get rid of it, but until then, so that it's it supports that until I find out how to resolve it. But if you do have an idea, please comment down below uh, so that we can actually play around and test that. So the, two, the number of users is two. But one of them is a null address. The null address is the one that um, uh, that uh, is zero x zero 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 zero. I'm trying to I'm trying to find where or at what point that null address appears. But until then, we have a work small workaround. So we're just pushing all our profiles into, and then checking if any of them has. Our dummy address and give us the object of that dummy address which the object will consist of the self parameter which will hold the ethereum address the followers and the following so we're just um, printing that great so we have our list um, we have our list which holds our the self uh, parameter or the self key, the followers key, and the following key of that specific dummy address. All we have to do now is set uh, whatever comes in. That is, uh, we set the address instead of hard coding it. Now we get it from the NFT provider from the state, and also the following and the followers. So we're just defining the NFT provider in the profile feature. Then we're going to head over to our followers. We want to get the followers, which will be index one in the list that we are receiving. So how we're going to do that is first we say NFT dot So zero one two self followers following. So NFT of my profile. We haven't set it yet. Uh, so let's do a get. Create a get for it. my profile so we need to check first is it empty so that we don't end up calling an index of something that's null of course that will result to an error so we just do empty. if it's empty let's return zero else if the length of the uh, the list uh, is less than two that means there's no index one set it to zero else call the index one i hope it makes sense and we're going to do the same thing but now we're going to increment the numbers that we have set for following so that will be two and two will be three great and then lastly 
uh, in our object we have three parameters and the last one is the dummy address currently we're just setting the dummy address from the config .dat, and we want to pass whatever is returned from the smart contract so we check if it's empty we pass our dummy address from the config else just pick uh, from my profile Great. So if we try and refresh that, get profile, beautiful. So our followers is zero. We have our dummy address. Our balance is continues to display correctly. So we are good. So next thing is we want to get our NFTs or my NFTs in the, the tab in the my profile. So we're expecting because I'm a new user and we haven't done any create NFT function, I, I should have zero NFTs, right? So let's create a contract function uh, class for get my NFTs. And then we define it by giving it the function name that um, performs that. which is get NFTs, great. Then we start creating our function. So since we are reading from the blockchain again, we're going to use the call method from the Web3 client, pass our deploy contract, specify our pack, function as get my nfts and our params will be empty because you're not passing anything we just it's going to use the msg dot sender to get our nfts so we're just specifying our sender as ethereum dot from hex dummy address and we're just going to print the nft list we haven't set it within the application great so we're setting it in the home when you click on my profile so we have nothing um, which is correct we haven't created any nft right so next thing we're going to do is specify a variable for for it which we'll later use within uh, the UI itself because we now have to manage whatever is displayed in the UI of my NFTs tab. Right now, it's um, we just set a grid view, but we need to manage so that it can display the correct thing. So we're going to define a list of type of di type dynamic um, called my NFTs. Just prepare the get right there so that we don't forget. And then we're going to define my NFTs to the NFT list. But remember, this uh, anything that comes from the smart contract comes in a list. So we need the index zero, the first index zero, so that we can, uh, that's where the NFTs will be displayed. So in our profile, we, um, it's actually, is it profile or is it home? Yep. We're just specifying the my NFTs um, number. Great. So we say NFT. But my nfts dot is not if it's not empty display the grid view but if it's empty we're going to use our empty widget and just change the text no magazine nfts you do not own any nfts yet so we save that So as you can see, my NFTs 
is empty and we can say that my NFT's number is zero. Next, let's look at the collectibles. Because so collectibles in this case refers to the NFTs that one subscribes to or buys that is not their own. So we, we also want to be able to display that in the second tab. Uh, we'll create the contract function instance as usual and set it as collectibles, get collectibles. And define our function. We had already created this function in the smart contract. Just need to get the specific name, get collectibles. Then we'll proceed to creating our function. So again, we are reading from the blockchain, so we do not need, we need to use a call method. Uh, set the contract to deployed contract. Our function will be get collectibles and we're not passing any params. So just specifying the sender because what uh, the smart contract will use to check will be the msg.sender. msg.sender or the Ethereum, once Ethereum address is what defi is defined as the unique identification of a user in this application. So you'll find it's the one that we're going to use most of the time. So we want to set the result in a list dynamic called collectibles and set its get so that we can display it in the tab. Which will be collectible list index zero. Then set a notify listener. Now we specify if uh, the user has collectibles to uh, display a grid view and showing the specific NFT else, just show the empty widget. And for the specific NFT, we're going to work on that. On that. For now, we're just displaying the grid view that we had designed. So right now it's empty. We'll get to see whether that is fully working by uh, buying a subscription from the main uh, screen on the home screen and see if we'll actually f have our, the NFT that we've bought displayed. So now let's work on the main operation or the one that I believe we are all looking forward to is creating the NFT. Great. So in, the, in creating the NFT, we want, um, we have our image that we want to upload. So in this case, we're going to just upload from the gallery, uh, but uh, it's possible to use either an AI tool to be able to do that. You can specify to use a camera, for example, but in our case, we're just using the gallery. I have interacted with Stability AI before, uh, but the magazine covers that were being displayed were kind of, uh, they weren't that um, aesthetic. So went for just uploading an image from a gallery and then we're going to upload it to uh, Pinata, the IPFS hosting. Um, so let's do that. So we're just um, installing our image picker. And then we just define that process of getting an image from the gallery. But in this section, it's a very great opportunity to play around with some AI tools that generate. Um, I tried using the DALE for OpenAI, but um, seems to be i don't know if it was a better version or uh, i clearly couldn't um, get my desired output so i've played around with a few ai tools but uh, for this tutorial we're just going to get from the gallery first to avoid any um, complications and the main focus of the tutorial is actually 
the NFT marketplace and not AI. But please explore and tell me your experience down below. Uh, so now we've created a function that uh, allows us to get an image from the gallery. We're just creating a variable of, of type file. And then we're going to assign it with whatever that's uploaded in the image file. The, whatever that a user selects from the gallery, sorry. So we're using mixing, so we just need to extend it with the width keyword. And then we just pick the function and pass it. Great. So now that we have a variable that's holding the image file, we want to make sure that uh, we're able to update the image on the UI. So just creating a small provider for it that will allow us to set the state of the image whenever it's changed, we're able to manage that. So we're just having a variable called file and it's get feature. Then we're going to have a simple method function called set image where it picks the image that we pass it to and set it to the image underscore image and provides a notify listener. So we just need to add this provider to our main function. Then we just refresh our application to make sure everything works properly. So in our create NFT, um, we're just going to call our provider. and then call the set image file. And then now we're going to handle the UI, mm, the section that is dotted that says upload magazine cover. So if the exec.image is null, we retain the container that we have, else set the image. So we're using image.file, so you can try. Great, so we're able to pick an image it's able to set. Beautiful, so since we're creating an NFT, we are writing in the blockchain, so we're going to use the send transaction method of Web3 client, specify our credentials, which is a private key that we defined at the top. So we're just uh, doing the usual, defining the contract function instance that will represent the create NFT function in our smart contract. We're just confirming the name. Great. You'll be amazed the number of errors you'd get just by simple thing as misspelling. All right, so our create NFT expects a token URI title and the description, which we already have. The title and the description, we have the text fields in the UI. For the token URI, we will receive it from Pinata. Um, so let's just specify the nonce quickly, and then we just specify this from, which is msg.sender or our dummy address. And then we specify our chain ID. And then once you create an NFT, we want our NFTs to be updated. So we're just calling our get my NFT so that it's the state is actually updated with our new NFT. Um, so as we head over to the create NFT button, 
we just want to pass um but before that let's just go to funk we need to create now upload the image to pinata so that we receive the token uri which pinata refers to it as cid so just creating a function in the funk that will handle all that so we have an upload to pinata function where we'll pass uh, the image file that we got from our gallery and the title so that it's given a name which represent the file name so we're defining a form data pinata provides a very detailed api documentation for this so you can head over and look through so we're supposed to pass a form data with a key type file which will hold a multi-part multi file from our image file dot path and the file name will be the title great now uh we're next we're going to interact with do http client i'm not going to like write code by code because our http service dot that is the same one that we've been using throughout most of the series tutorials in our over here so it's just the same old same old http service so we have created that file just pasted it and now calling creating an instance for it uh, so we're going to set the base options so the base you so for pinata pinata is an ipfs hosting service that allows you to easily upload and store files on the ipfs network uh, it provides a user-friendly interface as you can see and allows you to manage your files. Let's log in. Allows you to manage your files easily and also pin them as well. Uh, some of these are some of the ones that have been pinned while testing. Uh, Pinata is designed to be scalable and reliable and it also is available for developers as you can see they have a very presentable documentation over here and it provides details on how to use a Pinata API which we have we what that's what we are using and how to actually pin a file or directory uh, you can also pin a json um, in our case we decided to pin the image file itself but we can also pin a json file that contains metadata of the image so that's another option so it's something to also consider despite in this tutorial pinning the file itself you can also pin the json which is more ideal uh, which contains the metadata and that's inside there that's where you'll find the image url uh, you can also be able to remove or unpin files in it and it also provides the allows you to create an api key um, you'll find it um, here i won't click it because that's where my api key is so you'll be able to get an api key where you'll be able to set up all the get the pinata api the pinata secret api key which you have seen us use and inside the pin file or directory you'll find the source code depending on the language that's preferable to you as you can see they're using form data that we are also going to be using great let's set up the pinata configurations where we get from the pinata website set the base url content type multi-part form data the headers will be pinata api key which we have set in the configuration file pinata secret api key great so now let's get our response by doing a deal request http client request with our endpoint being pin endpoint and passing our form data that we have created above so if we print we're going to receive 
a response with one where the CID or the token URI will be found in IPFS hash. So that's what we're going to pass. We just want to print to see uh, what is actually returned. So let's call our upload pinata in our create NFT function. Pass the image file and the title, set it to a variable called token URI because we're expecting a new URI and set an await so that we wait for it to be initialized. Then now call our, we call our NFT provider. Great, so we just called create NFT. So we can now pass our function, passing the image file and the title, contr title controller and the description controller and our context. If we refresh, and try creating our NFT, the moment of truth. <laughs> Mm -hmm. So let's write a simple title and a simple description. Load our image, and then create our NFT. Great, so we have been able to upload to IPFS hosting Pinata and we received our token URI. So since we haven't received any other error from our smart contract we should be able that means we have created our nft but since we have passed the get my nft function we're not seeing anything in my nfts tab so there must be an error so we can try that again and see we're getting so there's an error, array accessed out of bounds or negative index. That happens when you define an array uh, without, uh, when you just uh, declare but do not initialize an array and set it with its number of, uh, with its size in short. So that's the mistake that I did. Um, so we can try and run it. Get our new contract address. So we've just changed something within the function. So we don't need to carry the BI. As you can see, we can now see our, but no, that's the null address we were talking about. Let's just first remove it. We shouldn't be having any NFT yet because we're just we're working on a new contract. So let's handle whatever I had mentioned earlier about this null address uh, that keeps popping up. But once I'm able to sort it, I'll be able to share it on the, my Slack. I hope uh, you can follow in the link down below. So just the first uh, index always comes with a null address. So we're removing that and also we're removing anywhere where the seller is equals to the null address because that shouldn't be the case because um, it's creating itself but I don't know at what point mm -hmm. so the null address looks something like that so once we've done that and we try and run it again we shouldn't have an NFT great now let's create again having sorted our error Upload our image and create an FT. We should be able to receive our token URI from Pinata. Great, there's no error yet. If we try to go to my NFTs tab, we have our grid view. Great, and we have the number of NFTs, which is one, which is correct. So that's a great, um, you're making progress. So we are done with our create NFT. But now, uh, yes, we are able to show the grid view but we need to show the specific 
the exact number now. We have our NFT. It comes in form of an object. The NFT comes with its own detail, the title, the description, and all. So instead of create, uh, displaying our dummy grid view, we can manage the NFT card and provide the correct details. So first for the image URI, what we're receiving is a, is a URL. So we need to change that. Um, we're getting errors because we are adding uh, params. We are adding props into the NFT card. We've added an extra one. So let's see. Uh, just need to set the number of nfts that we now have and then we pass our nft in our nft card so that's the idea then remove const great we do the same thing for collectibles to avoid the error because there are three locations in the app that depend on the nft card together with the home right now we'll just give it a basic array because we haven't worked on that side of things so as you can see now we are seeing only one nft in our grid view amazing um so next we we let's specify our nft card instead of showing the image dummy the image and the title that we had just had coded let's pick it from the object that we have received from the smart contract so the URL is a net is a the image is um, path is a URL from the network. So we're specifying that and calling the widget.nft, it's in the index eight. And then we're also managing the error builder so that if it takes long to get the image, because that URL is linked to the Pinata itself. If it takes long or maybe there's a hard time receiving it, just display the dummy or the, the dummy image that we have that you can see right now in the screen. So it's just a matter of handling it so that we don't have like a blank uh, container. Next, we want to the place where we set the text J, we'll just remove it now because we're not managing names of users right now, but you can play around with it. Um, next, the title, we want to pick the title from the object, so it will be in index six. We just remove the, is it the const keyword? Yep. Uh, Let's handle that. Great. And if we try and save that. There will definitely be an error in home. Great. So we're able to see the image that we uploaded in Pinata and it has its we're able to receive the title and all. So next we are going to um place our nft on sale um so now we have our nft because in the home page or the first index in the home uh whatever will be displayed is whatever a user has placed on sale it won't display all the nfts that exist no it's only the ones that a user has placed on sale so for us we have created um an nft we want to place it on sale so that we can it should be able to be displayed in the home uh section so that we also get rid of the error that we have seen um so for now just to remove the error we're just checking if nft.nfts because we specified a variable called nfts which currently is empty. If it's not empty, grid view. If it's empty, let's call our empty widget that we designed and center it. Specify the title and subtitle. 
there are no available nfts magazine nfts is the first one to create so if we refresh that beautiful uh, so now we have an empty our home page is empty but now let's work on this sell subscription so that once we place our nft on sale we should see it in the home screen um, sell subscription await in it so since we are selling we are specifying a price we are going to be writing on the blockchain so what we're going to use is a send transaction method in the web3 client so let's specify our contract function Let's send transaction, specify a cred, specify a transaction. By calling the contract, specify or deploy contract or function cell subscription. And it will have, a, we're going to be passing the token ID and the price from our UI. Um, so our parameters will hold the token ID, but smart contract does not recognize int. So we need to convert the integer into a big int. I think this is our first time passing uh, something in our params. No, this is our second. So we're just passing it as, no, it's our first passing the token ID. So we are specified also the chain ID as well. Um, next thing is just uh, creating a simple function that will call whatever is in the NFT provider. So we'll pass the token ID and the price. Let's sell subscription, token ID, and price. Wait. So to sell, we need to put it in our place on sell feature. We just added our mixing and then we pass the sell subscription. But it requires two things the token ID and the price. The price will get it from the text editing controller, but the token ID. We need to pass it from my NFTs tab. So when you're using the root uh, feature in Flutter, we need to handle that, handle the arguments that we're going to be passing. So what will happen is that we need to pass the token ID from my NFTs to the magazine feature. And then in the magazine uh, screen is the one that has a place on sale. It's then going to pass uh, the argument to uh, the place on sell screen. So we're just setting up very quickly the arguments. It will receive the token ID and we're going to get some errors. Um, so let's just set up that, set that up quickly. Um, magazine then define it in our main dot dot mm. so where we call the magazine push named magazine we're going to change it by passing the argument token id which we have it in our nft card as 
widget.nft the first index yes so now we can head over to a magazine whenever we we need to now set the arguments as well for place on sale so that we come back here and pass the argument to place on sale let's set up the argument uh, class quickly mm -hmm. then specify it on main dot dot So you pass the argument token ID to place on sale so that you can proceed with our function. Great. So we're defining the props that we're receiving on place on sale, which will be held with the variable args. And then now we use that to get the token ID. Great. And then now we set up the text editing controller for price You're passing an integer so converting whatever we receive from price controller and we've called the cell subscription from the funk dot dot so we're just confirming if everything is as is so we need to specify for our price um, let's see it should we should receive it from msg dot value and now msg.value comes in the in way so we want to convert it to ether we want to work with ether within the project so we're doing that just a quick deploy mm-hmm then we set our value so for the price you're not going to add it in form of a parameter you're going to add it in the value like take a scenario where you're using metamask you're specifying the amount you want to pay that's what um msg it, it is defined as msg dot value but here since it's just an app it's not a decentralized uh, uh, concept like metamask and all we need to specify it on the value attribute. Wait, so if we click on our NFT, place on sell, specify Ethereum to one, we're getting an error. Great. We had, uh, the function was expecting two arguments and we were just passing one. So we've corrected that. Mm, so let's uh, compile and get our json because we have changed the argument for the function 
So if you don't update the ABI, you will still get an error. Place on cell, one cell. We have another error. Mm -hmm. There is no fallback function. Thank God, we need to deploy. Let's deploy it. Pick our new contract address. So we need to create an NFT again, uh, but it's good so that you can do some more tests, making sure that our create NFT is working properly. Uh, so it's heading to, it's uploading to the Pinata Great returns the token URI. We get CRNFT, place on sale. So there is no error on our end. So we hope to see it in the home screen, not yet. Okay, so uh, let's see. Um, now we need to, we haven't set that yet. That's why we're not able to see it. So remember we just set a variable called NFTs, but now it's not assigned to anything. So now we are working on get subscriptions. This is the one that will get all the uh, magazine subscriptions that are available that have been put on sales that people can actually buy from. Great. So let's create our contract function instance. Define our instance by calling our function. Um, so since we are getting data, we are reading from the blockchain. So we're using, as usual, the call method. Uh, we have specified that, there are no need of params. So we are setting our NFTs variable to whatever we'll received index zero. And then we set also the notify listener. So let's see how that turns out. We have an error. Great. Array existers. The same error that we had last time where we just uh, declared an array, but we haven't initialized it or set it as, given it a size. No, we have, um, let's see. Uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Let's see if we can... Uh, So if you set uh, your function to view, uh, you'll find that you can never update a state variable. So we just removed that because we are, we are playing around with a state variable. So let's see if that will work. Since we are using a new contract, we have to create again. Upload to Pinata. We should receive our token URI any minute. Great. So we have it. We place it on sell, set our price to one, sell it. We'll work on the UX, UX uh, part at the end. First, we just want to make sure everything is working. So our error has changed, I guess. Um, hmm. 
Nope. There's something, there's something. Let's see. Hmm. Ah, uh, it's on the UI. So we're setting it to five and whatever is being received is one. So definitely the grid view will fail. Beautiful. So now we have our <laughs> NFT card, but there's still an error because we should pass the correct thing now on the NFT. So it will be NFT dot NFTs index index. Remove the const. Yay. <laughs> We now have an NFT, we have our NFT displayed, the one that we have placed on sale. Great. Okay. So is as, as expected, since we have now an NFT card, that's coming, the data is coming straight from the smart contract. We want our subscribe screen to provide the correct details, right? Because right now, whatever is there is the dummy data that we actually prepared. So we're just setting argument, um, a class for that will handle the argument or the props that will be passed to subscribe because uh, we hadn't set that. So that we receive the moment you click on the NFT card, we receive the data for that specific NFT and display it on our subscribe screen. So that's what we're doing quickly, setting up our route with our arguments. Okay, so let's get our arguments that the arguments that are passed in our subscribe screen. Replacing John Doe with our address or this address of that of that of the owner of that NFT. Mm, and also setting the price. Since we placed on sale, we placed uh, the NFT on sale, that means the price tag should be updated to now whatever was passed. So we set as we set one, so we expect to see one. Great. So we're seeing the correct image, the title, the description. We can see the address of the owner of the NFT, our price down there, we can see it. So we're just doing a small padding, great, 
and there we have it so if we have more description it would really look beautiful but there it is we have all the description the information about the nft next now we're going to work on buy subscription which is the last uh, operation for this section of the episode as i mentioned we have so many operations to work on on the app so uh we're dividing it into two we're working on until we're doing almost 10 operations in this episode then we'll do another 10 in the next one so we let's specify the contract function for the buy subscription so the buy subscription happens in this subside subscribe screen specifically the subscribe but button that is at the top at the bottom right um let's pick the name of the buy subscription So when you're buying, we are going to be writing or doing a transfer. So we need to use a send transfer transaction uh, method in the Web3 client. Uh, specify the amount, the token ID, sorry, and the amount we specify it in the value attribute in the call contract method. We, we are passing of either unit type way because that's what ex is expected in the msg dot value when picking it we want it to be in either when we pass it it's okay if it's in way uh, the smart contract will be able to manage that as long as we specify so from we are specifying our dummy address and then we specify our chain id great um so now by subscription everything seems to be okay so when we buy the subscription what will happen as as me as a user of the app currently is that i should see that nft in my collectibles now because i am collecting in a magazine nft by subscribing to it or buying it um it's not my own so i'm just collecting by purchasing it so i should be able to view it in the collectibles tab in my profile section so once that is done we're just passing it hitting a small function in our funk that expects a token id just a token id to be honest and of course the price that has been passed which is the one ether that's at the bottom uh, left that we just call a buy subscription we pass it Great, then we go and in our subscribe button, first we call, we set up the, add the funk in our class. So as you can see, the moment we buy, we want our get collect, our collectibles to be updated. That's why we're passing the get collectibles function. Let's pass our mix in and then now call the function. Uh, NFT index is zero. And then we pass the price. So here's the thing. Um, we need to do a check. So I, as a creator of this NFT, I shouldn't be subscribing to it, right? because uh, I already have it in my NFT. So we are checking if the owner is the dummy address or the person who is you. If I am the owner of this NFT, you shouldn't allow me to buy. Only the person who does not own it will purchase it. So we are creating, we are passing in a package called status alert just to alert the user in case they are the owner of this NFT, just to tell them you cannot buy or you cannot subscribe to your own NFT. You already have it, you already have ownership of it. So that's what we are simply doing. So 
since we haven't changed we're still using the same dummy address that we had you just want to try and see if that subscribe button works accordingly so when you click on it it should tell us yes you cannot subscribe to your own nft great so now we want to change the dummy address and the dummy private key to add if to different ones so, so that we can see if our function is working properly just replacing it so we'll work with a different dummy address and that with its own private key if we refresh that we should have a new user who has no nfts nothing but they are able to see uh, subscriptions that have been placed on sale we are having a small error let's sort that out um Wait, so this is a new one and when we click, oh yeah, I re-accessed it. Let's see. Um, awesome. <laughs> we had an array that we had initialized and set its size. Wow. Um, we also changed the variable. Because that name variable name already exists if you recall the state variable that we created um, let's do that quickly mm, let's see mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's do this whole thing again properly. Okay, so it's showing on the collectibles, but there's something again wrong with the collectibles. It's displaying both <laughs> what you've collected and also your NFT. Um, let's see. Um, let's first manage the null address I talked about. Hmm. Let's switch up the addresses. empty so this is a new user if they subscribe
Great. So you're able to see the collectible in the collectibles uh, section. Yep. So let's clean that up. So now that we have the correct collectibles being displayed, we have removed the part where it was showing the NF my NFTs and collectibles. But now when you click on the NFT in the collectibles, it will show you the same screen as when you're seeing my NFTs. When it comes to creating an NFT, place on sale, cancel subscription and renewing, only the owner of the NFT should be able to see that. So we want to manage uh, that magazine screen in that if it's somebody is viewing a collectible or something that they do not own, they're not able to see all those operations. They, ha they don't have the right to actually create an article on someone else's NFT. So we're managing that. Um, so if it's profile, collectibles, let's see. Um, yeah. So when I click on that, I'm not seeing the top part, which is creating an article and placing on sale. So let's do the same thing on cancel subscription and renew subscription, which are the two operations that we'll be working on in the last episode of the series. Um, so just handling that using enumeration. Great. So the cancel subscription is out and we're doing the same for the floating action button if it's a uh, collectible do not show it great beautiful so this is what uh, the user will see from a collectible standpoint uh, let's create a simple nft because this specific user does not have an nft when we create There it is. So if I go to my NFTs and my collectibles, those are two different NFTs that are being displayed. So I just changed the set NFT function, which is private. I don't want to set myself or the owner as a subscriber already. That's why we are seeing uh, the NFT, someone's NFT and your own NFT, you don't need to be a subscriber in short. That's why we removed that. So if we try and um, I hope it makes sense. So let's try and add substantial data on the title and the description to just see how it would look if you were actually uploading real data. Great. So yeah, we place it on sale so that it's visible for everyone else. As you can see, beautiful. I can't subscribe because I'm the creator. So let's switch the addresses. Since it's a new contract, let's just create something. Some, let's add another information about um, a magazine, something that almost, data that almost looks real. Um, and then add an image. Great. So we'll finish up on the UX part in the last episode. Don't worry about that. So we can see the information, beautiful. Uh, so if I buy, I'm able to see my collectible. My collectible just allows me to read the magazines, uh, the articles that are there in that specific magazine NFT. Beautiful. So basically we have done all the operations, most of them, almost 10 if I'm not wrong. Uh, so in the next episode, we're going to work on the other 10.